Hello guys, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna talk about one of the most underrated regions of Europe. We're gonna talk about the Baltic states. And they are Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Here are the factors we're going to cover in this video. Firstly, we're going to give a little bit of an overview on the Baltic states, their recent history and what they have in common today in their economy and in their political situation. After that, we're going to talk about the cost of living in the Baltic states, followed by salaries in these countries, then moving on to real estate in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania, then a little bit about the transportation infrastructure in the Baltic states, followed by one of the most important topics, which is visa and residence permits in these countries, moving on towards the end of the video, talking about safety and the languages spoken in the Baltic states, and if you stick to the end, my personal verdict regarding moving to the Baltic states and which country I would prefer to settle among the three Baltic states. And before we start, the usual talk that you have heard already 100 times, and here we go again. If you want to travel, move or invest abroad, hit the like button, check our other videos, book a consultation call with me, the link is in the description, and most importantly, subscribe! Let's start! So, what are and where are the Baltic states? The Baltic states, or simply the Baltics, are three countries in Northeastern Europe. Some may call it Northern Europe, some may call it Eastern Europe, but Northeastern Europe is probably the option with less controversy. And these countries, as I mentioned, are Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. And why are they called the Baltic states? Simply because all of them have a coastline on the Baltic Sea in Northern Europe. These three countries have a lot in common, especially in recent history. They were occupied by the Soviet Union and regained their independence in the 90s. Then all of them went through a lot of reforms as independent nations, and all of them joined the European Union at the same time in 2004. Now all of them are full European Union members. They are also part of the Schengen Free Movement Area and use the euro as their currency. As I said, they do have a lot of things in common, but they also do have important differences. Now let's compare some important aspects of the life and economics of this very underrated region of Europe. We're going to start with the cost of living. Since the three countries use the same currency, it is actually pretty easy to identify differences in their cost of living, even though they are not extremely high. If we take the cost of living data of the three Baltic states, we can clearly see that Estonia is the most expensive of them all. Estonia made efficient government reforms before Latvia and Lithuania, and also managed to attract a huge number of foreign investors and companies with a series of incentives and also with a heavy and well-orchestrated marketing campaign. So, an efficient government, combined with a good PR, made Estonia more attractive, thus more expensive. Currently. Tallinn, the capital of Estonia, is the most expensive city in the Baltic states. Then we have Latvia and Lithuania, which are pretty comparable. Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania, has consumer prices slightly lower than Riga, the capital of Latvia. On the other hand, real estate prices in Riga are slightly cheaper than property prices in Vilnius. When talking about cost of living, we must talk about salaries, because they determine the purchasing power for residents to have access to local products and services. And here once again we have Estonia at the top. For similar reasons that also push the cost of living up, these very same reasons also push salaries up in the most northern of the Baltic states. Tallinn is the city with the highest salaries in the Baltic region. Average net salaries as of today hover around 1,250 euros per month. In Vilnius, average net salaries are around 1,000 to 1,100 euros per month. Riga comes last in terms of salaries, with an average of 900 euros per month net. Cities in the Baltic states, which are not capitals, tend to have significantly lower salaries than the capitals. The next topic is pretty tied to salaries and cost of living. We're going to talk about real estate. Real estate in the Baltics has a similar trend in all of the three countries. The capital cities have quite high prices, some medium cities like Kaunas and Tartu have moderate prices, and everywhere else prices are extremely low. Tallinn and Vilnius come at the top here, with prices per square meter at around 3,000 euros in the city center of these capitals. Riga is definitely cheaper, and you can find a lot of central area properties with prices at 2,000 euros per square meter and even below that. Riga, however, has an important difference compared to Tallinn and Vilnius. In Riga, the population is decreasing year after year, so liquidity is much lower than in Tallinn or Vilnius. 
the population of the Baltic states as a whole is decreasing, most notably in the countryside. This reflects in property prices in the countryside to have very low value. It is common to find apartments or houses in the countryside of Latvia or Lithuania selling for 10,000 euros or less. Now we come to the next part of our video, which is transportation. The transportation infrastructure in the Baltics is quite unique. Since these countries are some of the most sparsely populated in Europe, do not expect to find metro stations in any of the Baltic countries. Since the population density is very low, the need for complex transport infrastructures is also low. In a way, this is nice, as you will rarely have to deal with crowds or queues regardless of the means of transport you choose. Most of the Baltic states are flatlands, which makes it really easy to drive around them. Once again, since there are not that many people, especially in the countryside, the traffic usually flows quite nicely. Of course, in the capital cities and in the rush hour, driving is unpleasant as in any other large cities in Europe. The problem is that if you depend on public transportation, the options run less frequently than in places with a large population. If you are flying into the Baltic states, the city with the best connections is Riga, since it is the main hub of Air Baltic, Latvia's flag carrier and the largest airline serving the region. Now we're going to talk about visa and residence permits, probably the most important aspect if you are a non-EU citizen. In terms of visas, these countries are very similar since they are all in the Schengen area. But in terms of residence permits, this is one of the aspects in which the three countries have the sharpest differences. Latvia is the best country in the Baltic region to get a residence permit if you are a non-EU citizen. There are a lot of residence permit categories available. A residence permit for freelancers, one for company owners, a residence permit if you buy real estate in Latvia, and even a residence permit if you just park some money in a Latvian bank interest-free. In Estonia, there are already significantly less options. It is possible to get a residence permit in Estonia as a self-employed person or by opening a company. So, there are still good options. Estonia also has a visa for digital nomads, but since it is not renewable, I wouldn't call it an excellent deal. Lithuania is the country offering the least amount of options in terms of residence permits for non-EU citizens. To open a company and get a residence permit, you need to hire at least one Lithuanian or EU national. So if you are a non-EU national coming independently, I'd prefer Latvia or Estonia as the options are much more flexible. Now we're going to talk briefly about safety. The three Baltic states are quite safe and also quite comparable. They had pretty difficult times in the 90s, when it used to be much more dangerous in the region. Now, all of the three countries are in the safest moment in many decades. Estonia is currently the safest country in the Baltic region, but both Latvia and Lithuania are pretty safe as well. Now we're going to talk about the most complicated topic about living in the Baltic region, which is climate. Climate is probably the most negative aspect of living in the Baltic states, unless you like extreme cold and darkness. Then, in this case, this is the place for you. Otherwise, you'll probably not enjoy the Baltic winter. The Baltic winter not only has constant low temperatures, but it is also very dark, since this is a region of very high latitudes. So you can expect extremely short days in winter and extremely long days in summer. If you enjoy mild climates in summer, the Baltic region is a great option. It rarely gets extremely hot in any of the three Baltic countries. Now we're starting to approach the end of the video, but there's still one very important topic, the languages. Each country in the Baltic region has its own national and official language. In Estonia, Estonian, in Latvia, Latvian, and in Lithuania, Lithuanian. The difference is that Latvian and Lithuanian are in European languages, and Estonia is a finno ugric language together with Finnish and Hungarian. So, if you are a speaker of English, German, Russian, Italian, or any other in European language, Latvian and Lithuanian will be much easier to learn than Estonian. In all of the Baltic region, the prevalence of English speakers as a second language is very high, especially among the younger generations. There are also many Russian native speakers in the Baltic countries. So, if you want to practice Russian, you will always have the chance to do it in any of the Baltic states. Now my personal verdict regarding the Baltic region. I think the Baltic region is a great place for business, especially if you're working online. I think Estonia would probably be my first choice if I would want to start a business in the region, but Latvia and Lithuania also have interesting conditions for online businesses. If you want to have a passive life without actually having to work, Latvia is the best choice considering its wise residence permit options for passive investors if you are a non-EU citizen. If you are an EU citizen, you can just come to any of them and register your stay. 
even if I think the Baltic States is still a very underrated region, I would avoid spending all year there due to the cold in winter. If you can be elsewhere from December to March, then it is probably a good idea. That's it! Another video has ended. Write down in the comment section which is your favorite country in the Baltic region and why. And to end the video, the usual gibberish. If you want to travel, move or invest abroad, hit the like button, check our other videos, book a consultation call with me, the link is in the description. Is there anything else I had to say? Not really sure. Anyway, ah oh yeah, subscribe! See you next time.